Going into Season 21, I know you want to set yourself apart from the pack of meta slaves that just keep playing the same characters over and over again. And in doing so, you give yourself a specific power playing characters that people are not used to playing around that can solo carry you all the way from one rank to the next. All this being said, we put together the top six best underrated solo carry heroes. So let's watch this video all the way to the end so that you get the good juice and start climbing again and again. All that being said, let's just jump right into it, shall we? And the first character on our list is actually Reaper. And Reaper has taken quite a bit of downturn in pick rate, and I don't know why. I know that he received a certain amount of buffs that made him not quite as powerful, but he's still completely dominant against tanks and many DPSs in the entire game. Here's the thing that you need to understand about Reaper. At lower ranks, Reaper can single-handedly abuse tanks, and he doesn't need that much resources from his team. If you're in bronze, silver, or gold, play Reaper and be extremely aggressive and just push up on enemies the thing about low ranks is people don't punish you that easily and even if people try to reaper has so many tools to get out of jail between his lifesteal and his wraith reaper just gets so much flexibility so if people try to punish you you can always run away on top of this reaper can really do his own thing he doesn't really rely on team synergy or teams pushing it at all an enemy team could think they're winning and all of a sudden a reaper could drop right on top of them get a couple of kills incredibly fast and turn a team fight here's another extremely broken aspect of Reaper that you need to start abusing immediately. Reaper can walk through Rhine Shield and do damage directly to him. Here's the important takeaway here. A lot of times a Rhine will get low or a Rhine will actually get antied and he'll shield up and back away. You're something like a McCree or a Hanzo. You're not going to be able to do any damage through his shield and if you push up too aggressively you don't really have the tools to get out. Reaper on the other hand can push up extremely aggressively through the enemy front line as long as he's aware of what can shut him down something as like flashbang. He could do damage to the run, instantly wraith away, cap that value into the team fight, secure that kill, and you really have a high impact on the game. Now, a general other rule of thumb for Reaper is you need to be using your lethality to actually get more value out of your Wraith. This is extremely important against matchups like DPS. Let me explain. If a you drop right on a McCree, shoot him once in the body, what is he going to do? That's right. He's probably going to try to flash you. But in that split second, you pump him once in the body, you instantly Wraith. Now, if you see the flashbang go through you, he tried to flashbang you, but obviously he couldn't. Then you could just pop right out of Wraith. You have a full clip and you just instantly kill the McCree. He has no counterplay. Now, if he doesn't use his flash, you simply wraith away and you try again later. The flexibility of that play means that you almost can never get punished. The more accurate your first couple of shots are on the McCree, the more damage you do, the more pressure you're going to actually put into him to actually try to flashbang you. It's actually possible to one tap a lot of different DPS as well, especially if you're dropping from the high ground. You can one tap if you aim for the upper torso of something like a McCree. You get a little bit of pellets in their head. You can one tap him. You can one tap a lot of characters. Usually the bigger the hitbox, the easier it is to one tap. Things like Doomfist, things like McCree. It's a little bit harder to one tap things like Ana's, but if they're zoomed in and scoped, not paying attention to you, you walk right up to them, you tap them right in the head, and that's all there is to it. Reaper is incredibly underrated, but he really is the solo carry god, particularly at the lower ranks. But I know sometimes people have struggles playing Reaper against a lot of their counters, but it's still possible to pop off and dominate them. And if you can play around your counters, you can really just hard carry an entire game. The best way to learn how to do this is go to GameLeap.com. We have in-depth Reaper VOD reviews at a high level, so you can see all the things that go into the thought process of a Grandmaster player playing around all these complicated cooldowns like Flash and Sleep Dart. So do yourself a favor and go check it out. You will not regret it. Now, moving on to the next character on our list. This one is going to be really bizarre. I know you're going to be a little bit surprised to hear this character. But the number two best underrated solo carry hero going into season 21 is actually Torb. Torb is silently a hard carry in this meta. And I know what a lot of you are going to be saying. What the hell? Torb? Why is Torb a hard carry? Well, the thing about Torb is he could be extremely oppressive against some compositions. He can destroy Reinhardt shields in incredibly fast. In fact, he can destroy every shield incredibly fast. He can destroy Winston Bubble, Sigma Shield, Arissa Shield, Ryan Shield. Being able to spam from long range and, and do quite a bit of damage rapidly, that's so powerful. And Torb just pretty much shreds shields. Now, another thing that's really powerful about Torb is he can completely shut down entire strategies. I mean, he doesn't care that much about a D.Va. He abuses a monkey from close range. Tracer literally has PTSD about Torb turrets every single day. Torb is incredibly underrated. And if you play a pretty 
three passive reserved torp you just get a lot of implicit value without bringing almost any mechanical skill to the table but if you can learn how to systematically just focus down targets and dual enemies you're going to be insanely impactful throughout the in course of a game the thing about torp that you need to understand is while you use your e you get a boost of armor and a rate of fire increase well this is really powerful for poking in general you need to make sure not to use this ability when enemies are going to engage you if you use it before someone dives you you use it before you're going to duel the tracer that could be a way that you have a chance of losing the duel if you save this ability for a duel you pretty much could duel every single character in the game like i'm serious there's very few characters that can hold a candle to a torb if he still has his e especially from close range and if your turret's there they have to focus your turret down first torb is a really good dueler he has powerful utility don't sleep on torb because really he can get you tons of easy wins and especially on defense definitely whip out torb whenever you see the chance now moving on to the next character on our list this is actually a character that's going to get a buff and is going to be incredibly incredibly strong this next season in my opinion and it's soldier 76 so soldier 76 is receiving an amazing buff from eight seconds down to six seconds soldier 76 is going to be able to get helix rockets online now this is so amazing for soldier because it plays right into his best play style so first let's talk about his best play style the play style that you should be using in every single one of your games the guerrilla warfare style play style is a soldier that goes on flanks take off angles plays the high ground and looks to burst enemies down rapidly the cool thing about soldier in this meta is especially against divas soldier is one of the few dps that can hold his ground Think about this example. If you're a McCree or a Hanzo, what happens if you're playing an off angle and a D.Va just pushes right into you with Jets and DM? Most of the time, you're going to die. You can't do anything to kill her. You can't really run away from this D.Va with her three second thrusters. You're just going to get zoned away. Most likely, you're going to die unless you get some sort of peel. Soldier 76 can actually make himself incredibly hard to hit, throw down a heal station. Once the D.Va runs out of DM, he can focus her down. He can hold his ground. It makes him really hard to be pushed by a D.Va. That is so powerful. And now, when you couple it with your six second helix drop, Rocket. he can really peak an angle incredibly fast look to burst down an enemy helix them try to get a kill reposition and just do that every six seconds non-stop try to get a kill try to get a kill try to get a kill the constant fishing for kills is going to enable this guerrilla warfare style soldier it's going to be very powerful and the fact that he doesn't get shut down by diva as well soldier is going to be insanely insanely fun to play he's going to be insanely good in this meta don't be afraid to pick up soldier because he's going to be insane going forward moving on to the next character on our list is our first tank it's actually sigma now sigma Sigma's about to receive a small ultimate buff, but that's not why I put Sigma on this list. Sigma is seeing a lot less play after he got nerfed, and I think people think he's completely bad, but I think it's also because people are playing Sigma wrong. Sigma should be considered an off tank and playing with a main tank, in my opinion. The powerful thing about Sigma, though, is he could do a lot of utility-based things that a D.Va could not. Let's imagine this example. You're playing with a Reinhardt and you're Sigma. There's a lot of things that Sigma can do. Sigma could shut down enemies with accretion, his rock. Very powerful knockdown ability that can duel enemies, catch people off guard, especially if you get accurate with it. Sigma breaks shields better than diva in a straight up ryan v ryan matchup sigma can help turn that matchup immensely help him break shields not only that because of his instant speed shield he can actually block shatters very powerful and the other ryan is going to have a hard time getting his shatter through now the next thing that you need to think about when playing sigma is sigma's ultimate is a game fight ender i mean it's a fight winner it's not something like diva bomb diva bomb can get some kills but a lot of times it requires on enemies messing up or ultimate combos but sigma's ultimate can just straight up hard carry a fight outright and that's something that you should start to tap into if you start to play sigma you could understand all the different things that he brings to the table don't be afraid to whip him out with an orissa don't be afraid to whip him out with something like a reinhardt sigma is incredibly slept on and on top of that he has so much skill cap that he can really hard carry you in a lot of games i think sigma is insanely good at hard carrying at the lower ranks and against the Rhin mirror he can get tons and tons of value with these really high impact hyper spears so do yourself a favor and pick him up you will be amazed at just how strong this underrated character is now, moving on to the first support on our list, we have Brig, and Brig is really nuts right now, and I don't know why there's like this aura of people thinking that she's really unplayable or really bad, because she's really not. She doesn't see that much play in Overwatch League, that's just because the synergy of Lucio overshines her a bit, but right now, this is what you need to do on Brig if you want to start Poppy off. Brig can pre-armor Reinhardt's, pre-armor Divers, and let your team be hyper-aggressive. A McCree that has a Doomfist coming right at him, but that Doomfist has some armor, that McCree is just going to die. 
There's literally nothing you can do. The same thing for a Genji or a Tracer. Armor just turns 1v1 matchups just so obscurely. If you go up against a good Brig, it feels like every duel you take is just not going to be fair. I mean, if you're in the middle of dueling someone and they get a burst of health or armor, it's just, you just feel like you're just going to lose. And Brig can enable this. The thing that you need to understand is don't just waste all your armor packs. I see a lot of times Brigs will panic and they'll just throw on like three armor packs onto one target the second that target gets a little bit weak. Don't do this because using armors systematically, using them really selectively is the way you get the most amount of value, helping your team dual enemies, helping your team stay alive from burst. These are all things that you need to do on Brig. The second thing you need to do on Brig is really punish people in this meta. Brigs can zone away Divas. Divas can't do anything to a Brig because of Inspire and being able to bash the Diva away, flail her away. Divas can't really kill a Brig and she can't really pressure her at all. You could zone her away and if she tries to do that stupid thing where she boosts into your team and tries to boost away, hit her right in the back, stop the the runaway from the diva you can easily punish that diva you can also stun the dm and help your team push through some damage very powerful stuff another thing you could do is really punish enemies for pushing up too aggressively on your rhine this is something that's really powerful that you could do because off tanks usually do this but let's say a may is rocking right into your rhine to try to freeze him as break you stun that bitch flail her away get her the heck out of there then you can allow your rhine to be more free have more space and then not to mention your rally is just so powerful it just lets your whole team be way more aggressive in some ways it guarantees fights even better than support ults in this meta defensive support ults is what i mean and the last thing that you need to understand is just try to keep your inspire up every four seconds you want to re-trigger inspire and you re-trigger inspire by doing primary fire damage or hitting players with your flail shot do this constantly trigger it every four seconds keeping that percentage up allows overall heals to be up and brigs that keep that percentage up really provide tons of heals for their team now moving on to the last character on our list it's a dps character again and this is symmetra so this is an insanely high solo carry hero that i think is really underrated for a number of reasons how many times have you lost a uh, 2 cp first point something like hanamura just because a symmetra teleported right on the point this happens way too much even all the way up to gm i mean it's so annoying when this happens but it's something that's slept on especially if you haven't whipped out a symmetra throughout the game it's one thing when you're a symmetra main and i think that's the problem is I see far too many Symmetra mains. If you main Symmetra, the enemy knows you're going to play Symmetra. They see it. They see your stats or you do it in the first round and you're not going to get away with it in the second, right? The returns is not really there because something that Symmetra really brings to the table is the surprise factor. And being able to whip out Symmetra just as a flex pick is insanely powerful because here's what happens. Let's take that Hanamura example. You teleport right on point. The enemies aren't prepared for it. They freak out. Some of them come to point. You kill them. You kill the rest of their team. They're all dead and you have like 80% ultra right now the next fight you throw a few orbs you get your ultimate you use your ultimate right on point and guess what in my opinion symmetra's ultimate is the single most powerful ultimate in the entire game i mean if you talk about an ultimate that alone can hard carry an entire team fight symmetra's ultimate it is the thing is, Symmetra's ultimate isn't that great against something like Dive, but it still could completely shut off some lines of sight. Widow lines of sight, it can completely cut off healing from Ana, things like that. And against some team compositions, imagine something like a Hanzo and a Kree and an Ana. You're just going to get completely shut out by a Symmetra Photon Barrier. Symmetra is the ultimate flex solo carry pick, and she's really, really underrated. She has an insanely high win rate all the way through the ranks, and she doesn't see that much play still. Don't be afraid to whip her out, and even in general, I mean, a lot of defensive matches you can really set up turrets on a flank and if someone like a tracer or someone like a ryan wants to funnel through this flank section he's just gonna get destroyed because he's gonna get slowed he's gonna get focused fired and you're just gonna pretty much outright win the game because of it so don't sleep on symmetra and if you really want to start climbing even more with symmetra or any of the characters on this list you definitely need to go check out gameleap.com gameleap.com has in-depth vod reviews over every single character and we go over advanced concepts that really help you through the process if you want want to reach a new peak if you want to climb become the best player that you've ever been do yourself a favor and come check it out you don't even have to take my word for it gameloop.com offers a 10-day money-back guarantee so come check us out risk-free i mean what do you gotta lose anyways i hope this guy's been extremely helpful for you i want to be seeing some screenshots of some hammer kills post them in the game leap discord you can go check out the links in the description i want to see tons of torp hammer kills in your ranked games so you better go out and get some of those anyways if you have any other video ideas you want me to break down or any vod reviews on the youtube channel Channel, definitely let me know that's all i have for you today i'm coach mills and until next time